Please be seated. I want to look at just one verse <clears throat> from the New Testament reading today, St. Paul writing to the Thessalonians, and this is what he said. In chapter 2 of his first letter, in verse 13, he says, For this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God, which you have heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. It's sad that some, you know, they, they sit through a homily, they listen, but they, they do not, people do not treat what they hear as coming from God. And maybe sometimes it's, it doesn't. <laughs> maybe sometimes it's just one person, you know, just babbling his own opinion. Uh, but in most cases, and God uses preachers, I believe that. In most cases, they, they are messengers. They deliver the Word of God. But even if it is the Word of God that people hear, sometimes they just treat it as, you know, it's just nothing. Treat it lightly. St. Paul said that he thanks God because when the Thessalonians received his message, they did not treat it as just St. Paul, you know, expressing his own opinion. No, he was the mouthpiece of God. He was the messenger of God, and he was delivering the Word of God. But the reason they did that is because of what Paul did, of the witness that he that he uh, left with them. In the preceding verses, he enumerated how that he conducted, he and his companions, conducted themselves before the Thessalonians and others in a manner worthy of the calling of God. Maganda yung witness nila eh. Maganda yung ano nila. Nakikita sa buhay nila yung message niya. And that's why the people believed. Now, it's sad that <clears throat> that's not true in other cases, uh, I hope it's not true in my case. I mean, I hope it's true in my case, but I mean, I hope it, I also give a witness so that that backs my, my you know, my, my messages. But in the Old Testament, there's this story of, I don't know, I'm sure you've, you're familiar with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Sodom and Gomorrah, we all, we all know it. Uh, the angels... Uh, revealed to Abraham that they would destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham also uh, loved his nephew. He told his nephew about the, the message of the angels, the message of God. Lot believed, right? But, but Lot, who was living in Sodom, and we all know Sodom represented the, the world, right? Sin and all that and darkness. And he lived just like the rest of the Sodomites. And when he told his sons-in-law about the message coming from God, the Bible says it seemed to them, his sons-in-law, it seemed to them like he was joking. It seemed to them like he was joking. Hindi nila pinaniwalaan. Parang, ikaw? Magdadala ng salita ng Diyos sa amin? Oh, why? You know, just get out of here. Don't, don't, you, you must be joking. You must be jesting. You're not serious. Can't be serious, right? I mean, you, we know you. You're one of us. You know, you're not different. You're not holy. You're not separate. You're not peculiar. You're, you're the same as us. You can't be delivering the Word of God to us because we see it in your life that, you know, you're not sensitive to the Word of God. And that's a sad, sad situation to be in. I hope that's not the witness of the church. That St. Paul, the Thessalonians believed him because they saw in him what he preached. He practiced what he preached. This is also true in the case of Jesus. You know, 
uh, in many, many instances in, in the Gospels, it, it, it said that when Jesus preached to the people, they believed that they, they're astonished because he was teaching them as one having authority and not like the scribes and the other religious leaders. What set him apart? When he would preach, he also would heal people. He would also demonstrate his compassion on them. Before, you know, in, in one instance before he preached to them, he, he felt compassion for the multitude because he saw them like uh, as if they were sheep without a shepherd. Meron siyang malasakit. The other preachers, the other rabbis, they, they didn't have concern for the people. They did not want to lay their hands on them and pray for them to heal them. Kasi sa kanila, nakakadiri yung may sakit. Both spiritually and physically. Di ba? Noon pa lang, nagpa-practice na sila ng social distancing. Eh, di ba? But hindi lang yun. No? They it touch someone who is unclean, they could not be, uh, keep themselves ceremonially clean and so join the uh, activities in the, in the temple or in the synagogue. So they were concerned about themselves, not the people. And that, that separates uh, preachers who are believable and preachers who, you know, who would seem like they're just joking to people. And that is a challenge to us as the church. We all are proclaimers of the, the Word of God, the gospel of the kingdom. All of us. Pinapaniwalaan ba tayo ng mundo? Yun ang tanong eh. Or do we seem to them like Lot seemed to his sons-in-law? He was not believable because they could not see in his life what he was proclaiming. Right? So yun yung, yun yung message sa, sa atin. May, may we learn to or make sure that we practice what we proclaim to the people. Jesus, in his high priestly prayer, in John chapter 17, he was praying to God, and he was praying for the unity of his disciples, of the church. And he said, I pray, I desire in my heart to see them one. I want them to be one as you and I, Father, are one. Because if they are one, get this, if they are one, when the world sees that they are one, then they will believe. St. Paul said to the Thessalonians and to the Corinthians, when I preached to you, I did not come with persuasive words of human wisdom. It's terminology sa, sa Thessalonians, I didn't come to you with flattering speech. Hindi lang ako magaling mag-preach. Hindi lang ako mag magaling magpatawa, mag-entertain, mag-illustrate, uh, mag-homily. No, no, that, that's not why it's the kingdom of God does not consist in words. The kingdom of God is of the, the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That power comes from a life that backs up what we say what we proclaim about the kingdom of God. Do the people see that what we say about the kingdom of God, we also live out in our individual lives and in the church. When we preach forgiveness, at sasabihin mo ng mga tao, eh, kayo nga, hindi nagpapatawad. Eh. Kayo nga, hindi maawain. Eh. Kayo nga, hindi mapagbigay. Eh. Tapos magpipreach kayo ng generosity, magpipreach kayo ng forgiveness, magpipreach kayo ng mercy. May that not be the case with us, but may we have a, a, a good witness to the world because that's who, what we are. That's who we are, witnesses. Sabi nga ni, ni St. Francis, di ba? Proclaim the gospel at all times. At all times. And if need be, if necessary, use words. But the rest of the time, the majority of the time, proclaim it with how you conduct yourselves in the world. A challenge to us. May we always remember that because that's the way it is in the kingdom of our God.